Hi everyone, I hope you're good guys and welcome for a new video. So today I wanted to talk to you about the Mini Brute 2S. I know it's been a long time since it's been released and there is already many reviews, but there is not that many actually, which are kind of techno oriented and it's always hard as a techno music producer when you're looking for a new piece of hardware or the review are usually uh, never really techno oriented and it's really hard to see the potential of the machine and this Minaprut 2S is uh, for me really good for techno there is a lot of things the sequencer the semi patch modulation who are really great for techno and I'm gonna show you some things that I like to use and how I use them and yeah if it can inspire you there will be even if you don't own it there will be some tips and tricks that you can use even in Ableton it's not a problem at all all right so I try to make a constructive review and first trying to explain you the send the patch bit sequencer but the thing is with the synthesizer it's when you start to patch the things you can easily go wide and go in the direction and kind of get lost a little bit as you will go in the modular synth so sorry if i escape a little bit too much from the subject but i think it's important because it really reflects how the, this machine work how the synthesizer work and the possibility and the inspiration you can get uh from it is just crazy. So yeah, let's get started. As you can see, I will divide it in three parts. You have the sequencer and you have the patch bay and you have the synthesizer part. So basically it's a semi-modular synthesizer, which means that everything has been pre-wired, like the connection are already, I don't need to put cable to have sound and everything is pre-patched. It's like in blue, as you can see here, LFO2, VCO2. But obviously because of the patch bay, you can completely change any connection and you can, for example, have the LFO2 uh, here making connection and modulating the F frequency modulation here. The two cool things I like it about the sense, the sequencer and the patch bay. And the other thing is the oscillator is a little bit special because basically you have uh, three kind of waveform, uh, sawtooth, square, triangle but the thing is basically you can kind of blend them together to create a kind of new waveform and in top of that each waveform have its own um, modulation so for example with sotus you can add some ultra so which is kind of detune unison effect and with the square it's uh, classic pulse width that you can even modulate here with the LFO and you have triangle which have this what they call metalizer which is kind of fault modulation and on top of that you have as well uh, the glide to have the speed variation between two nodes and you have as well this frequency modulation oh. so that's really good in techno obviously here sounds weird but i'm gonna add a bit of effect So it's all about fine, tu fine tuning and fine stuff. I'm gonna come back to this later on, but yeah, you have this and then after you have the global tuning. And then you have oscillator too, which is more kind of a classic oscillator where you can switch between the waveforms. So uh, you have a sine wave, sotus and square. So you see different than oscillator one. And you can tune your second oscillator with this uh, knob but you can choose what kind of tuning if you want fine so basically if you go you can go like from one octave upper and one octave down more or less it's a bit more but and it's really nice for fine tuning obviously you have all which is going more like on the whole frequency spectrum and you have LFO, which is gonna be like a very low frequency and it's gonna act like LFO, you cannot hear it, but yeah, you can use your uh, VCO after with the patch bay to modulate as LFO another parameter. Then we go into 
the filter section so we, it's quite basic you have the filter cutoff resonance and both can be modulated uh, so here it's pre pre patch like it's with the ADSR so if I want something plucky up I bring the GK up and I got my plucky envelope you can uh, sorry you can modify modulate the resonance with LF01 Honestly, I never use that, but then you can change the kind of the, the type of filter, you low pass, band pass, high pass filter, and then notch. All right. And then you have this knob, which is attenuation, attenuator one. This is good because for example, you have, so you have frequency modulation here, but you have as well linear uh, frequency modulation. And you don't have parameter to control the amount like with with the normal uh, frequency modulation, so that can be a good way to use this as uh, a knob to control the amount of modulation. For example, I wanna use the LFO to modulate uh, the you see the linear frequency modulation. If I bring it straight away, so from LFO here to linear frequency modulation. Oh. I don't have any control. I cannot control the amount I want to put. Rather than if instead of going there, I go through the attenuator. So you have the one here, which is this knob, and you have the two here, which is this knob. You can now modulate your linear frequency modulation. So just before to do that, uh, you have to keep in mind that by default, the attenuator one was. Um, modulating the cutoff so you have in your patch pay to sh shortcut this connection and you by doing that you just plug one side of your cable here you see it's attenuator one cutoff so you just plug this like this you cut the connection and like this this doesn't control anymore the cutoff because otherwise if you don't do that you would have the LFO as well controlling uh, the cutoff and your pitch modulation so same goes with if you want to use the attenuator 2 when you plug here you have here in the amp section you have attenuator 2 amp so you need to plug this to shortcut the connection otherwise you will modulate the amp as well in the same time so now I can nothing but if I want a more subtle uh, frequency modulation I can go something brutal but I can have something more subtle. So, kind of having a, a vibrato. And yeah, you can have more control on the depth of your uh, modulation. All right, so let's unplug this and go back to something more classic. Okay. And then after you have this amp parameter, you have the brute factor, which I don't really use. It's like a feedback, uh, the output going back in the input, and it's kind of creating this self oscillator thing. can be good sometimes but I don't really use it honestly and then you have the master volume yeah let me put a little bit more gain and then I didn't talk about but you have the two LFO so this is basically what you find in any cent or you can control the rate the waveform and uh, if you want to be like the LFO synchronized to the BPM 
or if you want to be uh, free. And then let's talk about the envelope. I, you have uh, a JSR envelope and you have this NG envelope. And that's one of the factors as well that I bought this scent is because this was this AG envelope that you don't find in a lot of scent. And basically it's interesting for the loop mode. So just let me explain you how it work in once. So you have gate, which is gonna basically act like classic ADSR with a sustain at the maximum. So if I hold, it's still playing. And the GK and the release will be like, basically they will be connected. Uh, when I move this, it's like if I move both together. And the longer I put the GK, the longer as well you have the release. And attack, obviously like classic trigger mode, it's different. If I hold the note, it doesn't play. It's just attack and GK basically. It's just going up and down. There is no, uh, there is no like, you know, sustain a level in the middle. So obviously if we put a long GK, it's taking ages to go down to zero, but slowly, slowly it's going down to zero. And the cool thing is you put in gate and instead of having once you put in loop and then you have a kind of LF4 now. And basically the GK is acting as a rate. So if I go down, it's gonna be shorter and shorter. And as you can hear, if I go down, down, we kind of starting to get this kind of nice I just love and that's crazy then you can add some Then after you can play with the FM and go crazy, but yeah, that's that's a, a way I like to use it, like really playing with this. Because the crazy thing, you can then apply this to uh, a lot of things, basically, and you don't need always to be with the amp. And let's say, for example, you want you have the square and you want to add this uh, envelope modulation to the pulse width modulation this way it's gonna change like this so let's say I take the ag out and i bring it in the pulse width modulation so now we have our square Sound. Ah, and same one thing i'm gonna do as well before i don't want the amplitude to be controlled by the ng envelope and I'm gonna say I'm gonna I want to be controlled by the ADSR envelope. So I take the output of the ADSR envelope, and I replace by here. You see, it's it's right AG, so that means that was modulating by the AG envelope, but now no anymore. So of course I have, I don't have any more sound now because the ADSR envelope is all down. So I bring the sustain up. Now I have sound. I'm gonna bring a bit of GK. And so now our AG envelope is only controlling the pulse width modulation that you cannot hear now because the amount is at zero. And now you can. Kind of sound and then let's say you can even go even further and that's why i love this scent is because now i'm like okay i have this how can i can even take it further oh but why not using the metalizer because basically you can see here on the patch let me remove this you can 
the metal in it's by default the, the triangle waveform but basically you can uh, bring any other waveform inside it so let's try maybe uh what can we could we do no I, yeah let's use actually the square waveform to just modulate the triangle waveform let's see for now so this now this weird square waveform i wanted to modulate the metalizer of the triangle so basically now my triangle this is my this is my triangle i had a bit of metalizer and now i'm gonna use uh, this stuff to modulate the triangle metalizer oh. The thing is now if I modulate the GK, obviously the GK is modulating the pulse width of the square and the square is modulating the metal uh, metalizer from the triangle. So basically the GK we mean modulating the triangle waveform. <laughs> You can even instead of modulating this you can even being the 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 source so now basically the the, the square waveform is going into the metalizer let me bring this is the same because i bring this one into this one now you can yeah why not and then let's try something as well actually i i didn't try let's try now as well to use this square waveform to modulate the metalizer as well so we hear the waveform the square waveform but we're gonna use it's like we split it to as well modulate the metalizer it's a bit complex but let's see what how it's okay no so actually i need to patch this differently up this and now in the mod <laughs> Yeah, I use this cable, so it's not coming with the mini brute, but you can buy them. I have another one here. It's from uh, Chip Top Audio. It's really cool. Like this, you can kind of duplicate uh, your signal, kind of. And yeah, and we could even go even further. Let's try maybe to modulate. You can modulate basically the GK with. Uh, so let's Like 
to do something like this so you see the GK here can be modulated so I'm gonna use the LFO1 <laughs> Okay, let's say now I want to modulate this filter because I like the movement. And I'm gonna use LFO2. So here I'm gonna go in the attenuator 1. And I want to be a. Yeah. See? Let's bring the. Bit less. And yeah, now we got this. Kind of stuff that we could put in the background to modulate. Yeah, that's that's crazy. That's that's what happens all the time. You start with some singing and you say, "Oh, but wait, if I modulate this with that and then do this with that," and it's just it's finishing like a big spaghetti here. And yeah, on top of that, let's bring back to the low pass filter. I'm just gonna remove this frequency modulation. Yeah, now let's start from scratch. I think it's a better idea. Like this, I show you a different way to modulate things. Let me relate everything for you. So bring this back everything down. Yeah, one thing I didn't really talk is the frequency modulation that uh, I love to use, especially with the software from here. You can use this. So here is controlling by the VCO. Let me bring. So yeah, here at the top you can choose uh, in the scale, so in minor, and you can as well um, go down octave or up. You can even transpose after the sequence, but you see, like it's gonna be in C, but I can bring in F. But anyway. Yeah, this. Always very subtle between these two. I like to kind of play and. It's always finding the sweet spot, which is kind of hard, but once you find it. But once you find it, be careful when you touch the filter modulation because it happens sometimes these two numbers are too close and I was like playing with the cutoff and then I touched this one and like because it was like very fine tuning, it kind of fucked up my sound. So. That's why if you can if you see my video sometimes when I'm performing live, I use now more and more the frequency modulation to kind of open the filter because usually there is an envelope on that and and it's kind of it's kind of acting as a cutoff as well because the envelope opened the filter and anyway I like as well because it's kind of uh, having a pluckier and and sharper opening but yeah just the thing is here is the is this but obviously you can um uh, decide to be modulating by something else so let's say now we're gonna modulate instead of vco2 
we're gonna use the triangle so I grab the triangle and bring into the frequency modulation <laughs> you can use the metal light button. and let's try to modulate this uh, let's use the LFO to modulate the metal mode here but I think we can get something uh, better. Let's try. Yeah, why not? That's nice. So yeah, one thing I wanna do, I wanna control the volume with the ADSR because I want the AD envelope. I wanna show you how powerful is this stuff. It's just crazy. And yeah, AM. So instead of the AD controlling the, the amplitude is the ADSR and it's with it's controlling both but what can be nice is to use the AD for example to modulate uh, the filter so let's use this and it's now I kind of switch the AD is controlling the filter and the ADSR envelope is controlling the amplitude and in loop mode is always interesting Let's kind of blend it a bit. <laughs> Just love this, and you see, I, I wasn't planning to do that. <laughs> That's what to expect with this beast. It's been like this. this kind of. I didn't want it to do that at first. I wanted to control the filter more like as the LFO. But that's how it's worked with the mini B2S. It's never really ending, ending like you plan to. So now I want to control this. I want to try to control the FM uh, modulation. I wanted to do separately, but why not? So here again, I need to duplicate uh the ad so i'm using this one i can plug there and then i'm gonna control the frequency modulation so oh, let's see
Again, here I feel to bring back iPad Fitter. That's the kind of stuff I will put in the background, like to get this ambience modulated. So again, I could have, I could use like instead of doing this manually, I can grab uh, the LFO2 and and uh, let me. LFO2 into the attenuator. And now the LFO is turning the knob for me. So I can. Yeah, I'm gonna keep this and jump into the sequencer. I kind of show you everything I wanted to show you here. Like you see, it's crazy. You, you once you've been used a little bit with the mini brute and you know what can you can modify. After idea are just coming like this. It's like okay, but wait, I wanna modify the frequency modulation with the edge envelope. Oh, but wait, if I modify uh, the square with the LFO. Uh, can I not use this square as well to modify, s modulate something else? I mean, it's it's just, it's just never ending. It's crazy, and that's great. And then I even talk about even the sequencer, which is gonna bring even more craziness. So let's, for the part here, I'm gonna before to talk about the sequencer, I'm gonna talk about the arpeggiator. So. If I wanna hold the note, I can press shift and on, and like this, I can. It's already, you see it's old note and I don't need to do nothing. And I was going to say, now I have my hand free to modify something, but I kind of already automate everything. But let's say you like this. And you want to record it. So now if you press record, if you press shift and record, now the beauty is you should have your sequence here. So if I remove this up engage now if I press place I should have my sequence record that's crazy you know how, how fast I mean fast I took the time to explain but that's how it's it's work and that's crazy and now we just talk about the first things so Let's jump into the sequencer. So obviously you have the pitch. So by the pitch control is not. You can change. You can change the length as well. The last step here is there, but you can put. Uh, let's say here. But then if you wanna something a little bit. No, not like this, like this. You get something a little bit different. And obviously, so you can remove some of the notes. Oh, let me put your step. But then you need like this. You can control the gate, so the gate is the length of your note, obviously. So you can like kind of tie that. So here uh, I've made a connection between these two notes. Like you can tie, tie connecting by the key like if you was with the glide. Speaking of glide, let's try to add some glide maybe. No, 
not a big fan, but can work. And then you have these two other mod one and mod two, and this is like this is crazy. This basically you can control the velocity, obviously, but so you can choose the velocity you want, but it's going way much further than that. Basically, you have mod one and mod two, which means like you can use um you can use them to modulate any parameter. So let's remove uh, this, and like this, the filter is gonna stop moving. Or well, actually, I could just yeah, let's remove it because after I'm not gonna know which parameter. But the cool thing is I can automate now the filter and with the velocity to have like a kind of um, I can modify the position of the filter for each step. So let's say Everything one seven, and if I bring down, Alright, so I've kind of reset everything because to show you the two last, uh, it will be easier if I reset everything. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more in detail about the sequencer as well. So basically, you can load here and you have like uh, 16 sequencer and you have four bank, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, four bank of 16 sequence and you can as well change the, the, the sequence and the pattern. But yeah, let's. I've loaded this one because it's an empty one and. First thing you can do is basically you can press shift and you can choose um, in which direction the sequence is playing. So let me just put some note here and let's step here for example. And you can change the you can change the speed and you can change the scale. You can have even a user scale that you can modify software and you can transport as well so here it's in C but you can put F sharp and you can go an octave down so now you have your step here and you can kind of I said it was the gate and so here the interesting things you can do you can obviously control the velocity but you can always a good way to make weird sequences is you can hold on velocity and basically you can uh, control the gate but you can control uh, control voltage but you can control as well the pitch and the interesting by doing that is like it's kind of a separate sequencer than this one and basically with uh, this pitch um, sequencing you can control the oscillator too and get like two kind of uh, paraphonic uh, sequence so i'm just gonna grab um mod one and i'm gonna go into here which is the pitch of oscillator two and so that way now i have let's say this two note and when i bring this one last step here And and I can and the cool thing is now if I bring this one. And so 
so here as well independently you can change the length step so here's in five for example but if i go to pitch it's in six so you have this kind of uh, polymeter uh, rhythm <laughs> I reset the patch it make it simple because like for example when you have here I have both uh, Sotus waveform engage and it's nice because you get this detune and when I well, like I said when it's a very complex form is it doesn't work as well as here and anyway here it's easier to, for you to understand but it can be nice because for example you can just having one part of your track with just this sequence and then if you want to add variation on the track you can bring slowly the oscillator too that's something really cool to create like some kind of uh, weird uh, sequences but another thing where it's crazy, so here it's controlling pitch, but it can be used, like I said, to control uh, the filter or any other parameter, but you can use it as well as... Uh, so you have voltage here that I'm not really familiar with, but I'm going to skip, but you can use at envelope sequencer, which is basically mean... So here I have these three notes here and gain. <laughs> can have envelope so this one I'm gonna bring everything down so this is controlling uh, the decay so what I can do is now instead of controlling the pitch I can use to control uh, the cutoff for example so I'm gonna bring this down and So now you can have an envelope which is kind of changing at each step and so now I'm controlling the decay but you can control the attack by holding shift oh sorry oh you see one millisecond but you see now you get this kind of grassy effect What you're doing you're sequencing an envelope which is gonna vary at each step and this envelope gonna modulate the filter so it can get this nice variation and then and that's that's just crazy and awesome because it's not just only controlling the the filter it's controlling like the filter opening with the envelope and I like to use it like this a lot and you have as well so you have envelope but you have LFO as well and basically you have sine wave triangle you have all kind of waveform and you can for example get similar effect with um, a so like this and then now so obviously it depends on uh, the speed of your LFO that you can control here so let's put
variation as well. This one honestly I use it less, I mainly use, but you can use for example, uh, actually in sample and in hold, if you wanna slightly modulate the filter. <laughs> move the filter so that's a very nice feature as well that's uh, really good you know you can really experiment I love it. <laughs> That's a, a crazy sequencer and and yeah really worth to experiment with obviously you can uh what cool thing i like to do as well is you can copy step and paste so for example you want to duplicate this sequence you can easily just by copying and paste things because if you want to add uh, more variation obviously and <laughs> that you can make all of your mess your modulation and yeah that's i really wanted to take the time as well to show you this because it's a, a really powerful uh, for hypnotic sequences and stuff like that is this sequencer is is really great for that so yeah that's it i hope i didn't forget anything i don't think so i i, I think i show you everything what i wanted it's kind of how to make it a review because as you seen like you start to do something and then you plug and then an id come and i mean it's like this all the time with the, the mini brute 2s so yeah i think it was a good idea to make it like this because it's really show you how the, the the product can really inspire you and push you to things different rather than having a, a very uh, special structure that is definite and you cannot really move and on top of that you have the sequencer to give you idea of modulation and you can get you see with these two different pitch uh that's a, a good way to uh, kind of, if you feel blocked in sound design, it's kind of a good way to kind of um, move forward and and expand your sound design skills. Obviously, it's what you can do with modular world, but obviously this costs just under 400 pound and a modular cent, if you want something like this, it would be probably around a thousand. So yeah, it's a good way to do a step, make a step into the modular world without doing it. I will probably never sell this because I just love it. Like I say, I like, I use it in all of my tracks since I start making music and I always use one for a sequence or something to put in the background. Like I show it's always or for some melody. Uh, yeah, I have an EP coming in September where I think all of the main lead are coming from uh, the, the Mini Brew 2S. All right, guys, I hope you like this video. Uh, do not hesitate to give me some feedback uh, if you because it's kind of my first review, what I could improve, what I could do to make it better. And every feedback to make the video improve is more than welcome. Thank you very much for watching guys and see you soon. Bye bye.